All right, hello everyone. Uh, in this section, I'm going to talk about manual segmentation, and this is just the, the act of creating these ROIs by hand. The objectives of this session are to teach you about the tools that are available in SNAP for manually segmenting images, and you'll learn how to use all the different drawing tools, how to organize labels for reproducible research, and how to perform basic quality assessment of your segmentations. So why do we care about doing segmentation manually? Uh, in imaging research, we always want to look at uh, specific regions or for, you know, for volumes, for activation, or whatever we're interested in. <coughs> the first step is defining these regions. So we currently, there's many tools to automatically do this. There's Pick Atlas, Free Surfer, Ashes, uh, but all these start with manual segmentation. The idea is, though, even, even though it's more time consuming to do it by hand, you always need something to compare these, these automatic segmentations to. Is you, you have to know that they're actually mimicking what a, a human raider would see and do in these, uh, in these images. So it's always going to be, so a, a human raider is always going to be the gold standard. You're never going to be able to outperform that. So if you're using any kind of automatic method, it needs to be able to be comparable to a human raider. And the other main use is when you have certain structures that are very detailed and intricate, it's, it's really hard to get a good automatic segmentation. So you're almost forced to go in by hand and do that. And this happens all the time. And if you have like a, certain pathologies or, or injury or just really small and intricate structures. It's just, it's, you, it has to be done manually. And a good example of this is the human hippocampus. So the hippocampus is the memory center of the brain. It's a small structure located in the deep medial temporal lobe and it's got this curved seahorse shape. So this is a coronal slice of the hippocampus and it's composed of these anatomically, oh, I don't have a pointer, these anatomically distinct subfields. So there's this corneal monus that wraps around and this dentate gyrus in the middle, and the corneal monus is split into subsections, which is called CA, CA1, CA2, CA3, and dentate gyrus in the middle called DG. And uh, so it's got this Swiss roll shape with the CA wrapping around the dentate, and then you have this dark section in the middle. It's called the dark band, and it's composed of these different stratum structures. I'll just call it the SRLM. And this is how the hippocampus appears in a T2 image. So again, you have the dentate here in the middle, CA wrapped around it, and the SRLM, this dark structure that separates the two in the middle. So this is the image we're going to be using for, uh, th this is the, the region we'll be using for the example segmentations. The, the first part with manual segmentation is custom labels. So you have a complicated structure like the hippocampus where we have at least five labels. We could have many more. Like Paul said, some, sometimes you have a thousand labels. And if you're going to be doing, it's very rare that you're only ever going to do one segmentation. So you probably do many segmentations across many subjects, maybe across raters, and you have to keep this organized or else it, statistical inference is impossible. <laughs> so the way we do this is by creating custom labels. You can assign a name and an integer value uh, and a color to each label. So that you can just save this label file and then load it up when you're doing the next subject and you have consistency from subject to subject, rater across rater. It's easy to compare, everyone's doing the same thing. So I'll just quickly go through a demo of how to create custom labels on all the different things we can do with it and then I'll, I'll go through all the options once I've just given you an example. So in, under tools in Snap, if you go to the label editor, we get this menu. And Paul mentioned this briefly, but I'll, I'll just go over this in more detail. So the available labels section here, this is all the labels that, that we use in the image. You can change the name of the label, so you can change this to CA, for instance. And this section right here is the integer value that's assigned to that label. Uh, that's what you use when you're doing inference, like find, you, you can ask the program for the volume under label one, for instance. And then the color. The color is just is just how you keep track of it. You might want to have distinct colors for distinct regions or different shades if you want to group them somehow. That's that's up to you. You can change the color either with manual input here or just by clicking around on the slider here. And that'll change the you can see it changes here. It changes in this window. So we'll just leave this as red. So for the hippocampus example, we can make label 2, the SRLM, label 3, the dentate, maybe change this color, 
Okay, so now we have our three distinct separate labels, and we could uh, export this and use this for, for sequential segmentations. So the other options here, new label just adds more if we need, if we need more labels to work with. Um, it just gets rid of them. Numerical value is the integer value that's assigned to the label. And the other important thing is the opacity. Um, so this controls, you'll, you'll see this more when we do the actual segmentation, but this controls how opaque or transparent the label is when it appears on the image. And the reason that's important is because when you're drawing these intricate structures, you want to, if you just draw over and it's totally opaque, you can't see the underlying anatomy. Uh, so sometimes you need to make it more transparent so you can see what you're drawing over, or you might just want to, if you set it to zero, the label, it's, it still exists, you just can't see it, you just see right through it. We can go ahead and do exercise 4A. That's the first one in the handout. And you can have this up as a reference. This is just everything I went over before. So you have the list of the available labels, the uh, adding, removing new labels, the name, the color, opacity, and the integer value. Yeah, so let's start on uh, exercise 4A. So the point of this exercise is just to set up the, the labels for the segmentation we'll do in the next step. So the next step then is the labeling options. So the two drawing tools, the paintbrush and the polygon tool, both have labeling options. And the, the really important part of this section is this concept of the foreground and background label. So the foreground label is the label that will be applied by whatever tool you're using, by either the paintbrush or the polygon. And the background label is the label that the foreground will be applied to. So in other words, if you have this example of label one is the foreground, label two is the background, you'll apply, you'll, you'll draw in label one, but you'll only draw over label two. And I'll, I'll show this more in the live example. But for instance, if you have background labels, clear label, you'll draw over any empty voxels. But any voxels that have a label already, you, you won't apply any change to that. So it's a good way to preserve edges, for instance. You don't have to worry about drawing over your existing work. So next we'll go on to the drawing tools. And I think this is just easier if I, if I show this to you. So there's the paintbrush and the polygon tool. So first we zoom in on a coronal section. So the polygon tool is this one right here, right next to the magnifying glass. And this is the, uh, the label inspector, as I mentioned before. So right now, the background is all labels. So we will draw over anything that's on the segmentation already. And we'll apply this CA label. So with the polygon tool, you select a region. You can either click point by point to create a polygon, or you can just drag, and it'll create points automatically but it's pretty hard to do that smoothly. So. so you can click point by point and create this polygon. And everything inside the polygon will be filled in. So then if you're not happy with it, you can hit clear, draw a new one. So here I'm drawing this outer CA shape. And then when you hit accept, it fills in everything in this region. Um, label opacity, as I mentioned, this shows you how translucent the label is. And it's useful for seeing the anatomy that's underlying there. Make sure you're drawing on the region you want to be drawing on. If it's totally opaque, you can't really see what, what you're doing underneath. And one really useful trick with this, there's hotkeys built in. So S will toggle this, which comes in really handy when you're doing the drawing. And the A and D keys will toggle the opacity and translucence in either direction. So to continue with the example, we could then draw this internal dentate structure. So now if I change the background label to clear label, so the foreground is dentate and the background is clear. So this will only apply dentate to voxels that are empty. So if I draw my polygon like this, for instance, so you see in, in here it's, it's overlapping with the CA region. But here, these are all empty voxels. So if I hit accept, it'll only apply it to the empty voxels. And if I want to erase, I would select the clear label and select the region I want to erase. So if I'm not happy with this dentate segmentation, for instance, I could quickly select this whole thing 
and hit accept, and it'll only erase dentate. Does that foreground background make sense to everyone? That's a pretty important thing to get. Okay, so let's move on to 4B, and you can give the uh, polygon tool a try. So the next, the next step is another live demo, and this is another drawing tool, the paintbrush tool. So let me just quickly redraw my dentate region. So the polygon tool is good for drawing these big areas. Um, and the paintbrush tool is better for, uh, I usually use it for more for refining segmentations for smaller regions. So it, it works the same as the polygon tool in terms of the foreground and background label. So let's select CA here. So OK, so I have this CA label I made here, but it's kind of sloppy. You can see there's some. You know, I didn't get the whole thing. There's some error here. So I want to improve this, but I don't want to draw the whole other polygon. So if I go back to the brush, I can make this very small, just a one voxel brush, and I can just draw voxel by voxel here and fill in these regions. So it's a good tool for doing these, these very detailed parts of the segmentation. I, mean, I want to improve the uh, dentate label, and the same thing here. So, say I want to, I want to fix up my dentate label, but I don't want to accidentally draw over CA. So, I'll only draw over um, visible labels. Oh no, wait, that's not what I want. I'll only draw over clear labels. So, I won't draw over visible labels. So then, say it doesn't affect what I've already drawn. If you have a mouse, you can draw with left click and quickly erase by just holding right click. So we can clean this up. Yeah, so it's a good tool for that. And there's some other features. Um, so the brush size affects how big the region is. So for instance, if we wanted to add the uh, SRLM in between these two regions, we could have to set the background to clear so we don't overwrite anything, select a big brush, and then just fill this in quickly. And it can also draw in three dimensions with the volumet volumetric option, so it'll affect multiple slices at once. So for instance, if I put this here, oops, I didn't select volumetric, sorry, then it'll appear in multiple slices at once. And it'll be a, a nine by, you know, it'll be the brush size, it'll be isotropic. <coughs> And uh, these are the options. That this is when you have um, anisotropic images. It'll still apply the brush in an isotropic fashion. So it's it's very similar to the polygon tool. It's just for more uh, for fine tuning the segmentations. Um, so I think I'll just let you play with that and do the next exercise. It should be pretty straightforward if you did the other one. Um, before we start this, I'll just I'll leave this up here so you can have this as a reference. Uh, but it's like I just showed you this, the brush options for the, the shape of the brush, the size of the brush, and um, under the, the label inspector is under this, this tool. So, so let's, this let's is just a quick three point three. is this, uh, this little tool here. This tool right here is a, a, a quick tool for the foreground and background. So these are all the other um, settings I've used, and you can select foreground and background here as well as the label editor. It's just a faster way of accessing the same tool that's uh, in the Active Tool Inspector. Rather than going here, you just you have a quick button for it. The, the main way I to look at your volume as a whole, this is the main thing I do to assess the quality of the segmentation, is doing this in three dimensions. So here I've done a couple of slices. Um, and if we open up this window and hit Update, It'll show you the segmentation in three dimensions. So here's CAA on the outside, SRLM in the middle, and dentate here surrounded by the CA. So we can rotate this around and see how our segmentation looks. So the kind of thing I would look for, if you look here, we have this weird kind of thing happening at the, at the CA boundary. We have this middle slice is, is much more shallow than these other two slices, which is kind of suspicious. So you can take the 3D <clears throat> pointer, put it in that region, and then look back at our slice and see what's going on there. So if we look at these slices sequentially, 
see where the pointer is, we can see that this boundary is shifting between slices. So for some reason or another, I, I haven't defined this consistently. So that's, that's the kind of error you would use the 3D rendering to look for. Um, and another example, if we, if we were to go in the label editor, say we wanted to just look at how, how CA looks throughout the whole segmentation. We could turn this label off, and then in the 3D render, the dentate is also uh, removed. So we can take a look, like, you know, check out how, how uh, this entry point of CA into dentate looks, or make sure SRLM is consistent. Does that make sense to everyone, how you would use this? With a difficult structure like the hippocampus, it's like this this you know twisted deep medial temporal lobe structure so it can be pretty hard to just just see what it's supposed to look like shape by shape or uh, slice by slice so when you look at it in 3d you can see if you get like this really weird shape or something bulging out that can that can help you uh, differentiate what's actually tissue from just noise or white matter or whatever something you don't want to segment okay so let's go on to the last exercise 3d rendering this one's this one's pretty straightforward so I don't ever actually use the spray paint tool um, but it's just a way to relabel voxels. The scalpel tool is pretty useful, though. I can show you that. So the scalpel tool um, is, use, is used, uh, this one right here is used for when you want to relabel large areas. So for instance, uh, let's say I, when I did dentate, I, I used the wrong label by accident. I labeled the whole thing with the wrong, with the wrong label, and I want to change that. So um, I actually wanted to make it label for, say that's dentate too. So what I could do here, I could select dentate 2 as my foreground, dentate as my background. So I want to relabel dentate as, as label 4 as dentate 2. So I could use the scalpel tool to do that. Whoops. So this shows you the plane that it will apply this change to. And then if I hit accept and update, it changes the color. It, changes, it flips label to whatever you, uh, uh, your foreground is. It's also a quick way to, you can divide labels that way too, like if I, I could uh, cut CA in half for instance, I'll do something like that too. So it's like a, kind of like a paint bucket tool in, in Microsoft Paint or whatever, it just fills it in that area under the plane. So just to wrap this session up, label files are important for uh, the consistency consistency between subjects, between raters, uh, and just to make sure you're using the same labels for each thing so you can actually make valid inference. The foreground and background label is the, the point to really stress. The foreground determines what you're drawing. The background is what it will be applied to. Um, empty space is considered a, a clear label. It's a zero. So that's what you're drawing with most of the time. But if you want to like erase a particular label, then you select that as the background and clear as the foreground, for instance. Um, use the polygon tool for large areas to do a quick segmentation, paintbrush for refinement or small fine areas, and 3D view is used to get slice-to-slice -slice consistency.